All right, Professor of International Relations at Wits University, Professor John Stremler joins us uh, for more on this and to discuss uh, the issue. Prof, always a pleasure to see you here on SABC News. Welcome to you. Thank you. All right, Prof, I was going to ask you, you know, your reaction to, you know, what South Africa is uh, doing and, you know, how the U.S. Uh, would react. But I saw you in that uh, clip by my colleague there uh, speaking about how you believe that South Africa would, you know, in some ways be doing the U.S. a favor um, and that the U.S. Uh, indeed wants a, a ceasefire. Can you go further with us on that particular point? And I ask this because, you know, it does seem as though the U.S., you know, and, and some people say obviously so, have, have, have picked a fight in this particular uh, uh, case. So is it, is it fair to say that the U.S. actually does want a ceasefire? Well, I think it is a, a fair case to say that it, it wants a ceasefire. But what is it prepared to do for that ceasefire? Yeah. Now, on the first instance of the, of the ICJ, the International Court of Justice, the World Court, this week is a very important week because South Africa and Israel will present their rationales for um, making a plausible case either for or against genocide. Now, the South Africans are fielding in a, a, a very strong team of lawyers mm. led by uh, Professor John Dugard, and uh, they are going to make the case that with no food, no fuel, and no energy, uh, that, that the people are starving in, 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 um, in Gaza, and it is a prima facie case for genocide. That ruling will probably take months, if not years, to reach. But the decision taken on the question of whether or not to have a, what is a temporary injunction uh, is going to be done this week on the basis of the presentations. And that will give us an indication of whether uh, there would be support for a ceasefire or not. Um, even though once the, the court has ruled, uh, Israel could uh, ignore it, um, and as, as, as Russia did on the ICC and the International Criminal Court recently over Ukraine. But I, I think it would put enormous pressure for um, making this terrible, terrible humanitarian situation uh, no worse yeah. and maybe even a little bit better by having a ceasefire. Prof, you speak about uh, the South African uh, legal team, but I want to talk about uh, the, the opposing uh, side then, that of uh, Israel. I mean, what do you think, you know, as these as both teams, legal teams are putting together their, their arguments, what exactly is the, 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 the Israel uh, team would be putting together in terms of the fact that, you know, one wonders when you're being accused of a genocide, you know, what are the kinds of um, defenses you would be, you know, putting forward uh, to, to that? Uh, the, the, the short answer is I don't really know what the uh, Israelis are going to argue, and I'm looking forward to hearing uh, the reports on what is said in, in The Hague this week. But uh, they've got Malcolm Shaw, the British barons, there to lay, lead their delegation, and I expect that they will say that this is not genocide. The Jews know genocide as the Holocaust in Germany, during World War II when it was the elimination of the people. And even the right-wing government of Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, who has never, he himself has never supported a two-state solution and wants to have an ethnic cleansing and is talking about getting rid of two million Palestinians. I don't know where they're gonna go, but that's what he's been talking about. And yet he would still keep in place for annexation purposes some Palestinians and and there are of course 20 percent of Arab um, uh, Arabs in in the Muslims in 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 Israel already yeah. but they are not allowed the same kind of total freedom and respect and citizenship that Jewish South Africans are it is a theocracy after all and I think that the plausible case for genocide is prima facie what the suffering of the innocent civilians 
amounts to in, um, in, in Gaza, and there can be no uh, other in, interpretation of this than, than uh, the Israelis want to annex uh, the, and take over uh, Palestine and, uh, and, and uh, the West Bank, ultimately, and make sure that, that, that there is no threat that, that uh, Hamas was, was capable of, of punishing, of, of uh, doing yeah. in, on October 7th. But, but uh, they, 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 uh, they are carrying out a campaign against the civilians in Gaza that is absolutely, by any measure of definition in my book, a genocide. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, I don't want to belittle South Africa. I'm a South African. But, you know, some might argue that, you know, um, maybe South Africa has bitten off more than it, it can chew, given the fact that, you know, they, they're leading this charge, as you say. Um, and one might ask, you know, what power does South Africa have? Um, you know, we aren't seen as any sort of a, a superpower. Um, you know, what can South Africa really do? Granted, we have, the, you know, this, this amazing legal team that has been uh, put together, as you rightly mentioned. But some might argue, you know, who's South Africa? Well, what the South Africans are doing is carrying water for those in the international community that are appalled by the reports of, of human suffering among civilians, particularly women and children in Gaza, uh, and, and that is undeniable. And even the Israelis can't deny it, but they are pressing on with their military support. And yes, the, the U.S. has been supporting them, but uh, as your uh, introduction suggested, uh, the pressure for a ceasefire is growing internationally, and South Africa is a standard bearer for um, having supported the Palestinians for literally decades. Uh, John Dugard was working on Israel-Palestine back when I knew him in, in the 1980s, and uh, he was partnering with a uh, Israeli uh, who wouldn't come to South Africa because he didn't want to see apartheid on a grand scale. That was Marin Benvenisti. And uh, therefore, uh, he, he uh, uh, refused to come to South Africa because he didn't want to see the same kind of apartheid that was, it, it was prevalent in the West Bank and Gaza. So the, South Africa speaks on this with a great moral authority. It would be, in my view, better uh, able to pursue this moral authority if it was taking a somewhat more assertive position on the rights of the Ukrainians, but that's a whole other issue. And for this one particular case of Palestine, there can be no doubt that the South Africans have, uh, the, the, the ANC in particular, has been consistent for decades in support of Palestinian rights to self-determination. All right, Prof, thank you very much for your input on the show. We appreciate it. Uh, Professor John Stremlow, a professor of international relations at uh, Fitz University.